Hello, Woodycrest family. Today is Sunday, April 26, 2020, and this is the third Sunday of Easter. Welcome. I hope you've had a good week. I hope that you have seen the Lord in many different ways this week. Let's start our service by lighting our altar candle. Our greeting this morning. Christ is here, ready to be revealed. Watch and wait for the new growth to start. Join me now in our opening prayer. Eternal God, we are here, yearning to know you more fully. Stay with us as we worship this day. Reveal yourself in the words that are spoken, the songs that are sung, and the bread that is broken. Help us understand your truth and embrace your life-giving power, revealed within your enduring word. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our opening prayer, our, our hymn of praise this morning, excuse me, will be... Open my eyes that I may see. Let's sing along together. Join me now in the call to worship. Stay with Christ, and Christ will stay with you. Listen for God, and God will speak. Seek the Spirit, and the Spirit will be revealed. For the Spirit is already here, inviting us to stay. Amen. Welcome, Woody Crest family. It's so good to have you here. I miss seeing y'all again this week. This is our virtual service, and I wave hello, give you the peace sign. I did have a chance to see some of y'all this week, and it was a wonderful time. And I can't wait until we are all together again. So now our service will continue with the reading of the psalm. Psalm 116 verses 1 to 4 and then again 12 to 19. Hear now the words of the Lord. I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. 
I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank you offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. This morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were walking to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces were downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have happened here these days? What things? The mysterious man asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what's more, it's the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish are you? And how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter into glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it's early evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it's true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two were told what happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke bread. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. The sermon today is sourced by Reverend Kristen Atkins Whiteside, Senior Pastor at First Baptist in Winchester, Virginia. In some ways, it's hard to believe that Easter was only three Sundays ago. For most of us, 
Easter is a very distant memory at this point. The resurrection seems like something we talked about for an hour or so, just under an hour. And then we were right back to our regularly scheduled quarantine life, which seems sad, but it's our new normal. What may seem stranger to us really is the ancient Christian practice of celebrating Eastertide for 50 days, from Easter Sunday all the way to Pentecost. 50 days seems like an awfully long time to try to keep the party going, especially at a time like this. And yet, I think the Christian calendar is on to something. Because sometimes we miss Easter. Or we only catch a glimpse of it before it's gone. We need more time to digest what's happened. We need more time to let it all sink in. We aren't the only ones. For most of the disciples, Easter barely happened. No one witnessed the resurrection, and there are only seven stories of Jesus appearing to his disciples afterward in all four of the Gospels. So while the crucifixion seems painfully real, the resurrection takes on a sort of dreamlike quality in the scripture. We catch glimpses of Jesus as he shows up and then he disappears. And most of the people who encounter Jesus are not quite sure who they're talking to, at least at first. In John, and even more so in the Gospel of Luke, which is what we read from today, the people who meet Jesus after the resurrection have an incredibly hard time recognizing him. Mary at the tomb talks to him, but she thinks he's a gardener. Thomas hears about him third hand, but finds the story impossible to trust. And... The two followers of Jesus that we meet on this road to Emmaus have a lengthy conversation with the risen Lord and even invite him to stop with them for dinner. And they have no idea who they're talking to. We meet Cleopas and his friend in our reading today as they're walking down a road leaving Jerusalem and making their way on to a town called Emmaus. It should be noted that this walk to Emmaus is actually happening on Easter Sunday. It's just the evening of Easter Sunday. So everything's really fresh. Archaeologists, they're not quite sure where Emmaus is actually located. But I don't think geography is all that important here because even if we've never visited the same town on a map, we've all certainly walked down that road. This is the road of disappointment and broken dreams. This is the road of regrets and questions and uncertain futures. Cleopas and his companion talked with one another. Could it really have only been a week since we stood out on those streets with the crowds waving palms and and cheering? It had seemed like finally the whole world was beginning to recognize what they had already known to be true that Jesus is the true king, the only one who could fix everything. But instead, only a few days later, they had watched from their hiding places as Jesus is nailed to the cross, executed by the state near a city dump. What kind of king was that? What kind of Messiah 
they must have been wrong. He had to be maybe an inspiring preacher, an insightful teacher, a friend. But he couldn't have been the one that they'd been waiting for. As they talk to each other about these things, a stranger appears beside them. Clearly this dude is eavesdropping. And he finally asks Cleopas and his friend, are they talking? And he, he asks them, what are they talking about in all these heavy sighs and hushed whispers? Looking at each other a bit shocked, like mind your business, bro. They decide to tell him the story. The story about how they had hoped that Jesus was the one, but how they must have been mistaken. Sure, they'd heard the rumors that his tomb had been found empty, that an angel had appeared and said he was alive, but they hadn't seen it for themselves. And could you really trust a woman? Even the courts wouldn't accept their testimony. They were notoriously unreliable witnesses. Wasn't it more likely that this unbelievable story was just that unbelievable? But then the stranger does the most remarkable thing. He begins telling the story of Jesus back to Cleopas and his friend. But this time, the story starts at the very beginning of scripture and continues through the prophets and the Proverbs. And as they listen to the stranger's words, those defeated disciples feel a spark being kindled in their hearts. It begins to warm them all the way through, tingling down to their fingers and setting their hairs on end. It feels strange, like something they hadn't felt in ages, something a little bit like hope. They don't want to let the feeling go. It feels so good. So as they draw near to their destination, Cleopas and his friend, well, they invite the stranger to come and eat with them. But when they sit down at the table, all of a sudden, the stranger becomes the host. He picks up some bread and he blesses it and he breaks it. And he begins to share it as if it was his table and his meal. And as they reach out to receive the bread, Cleopas and, ha and his companion finally see the stranger clearly for who he is. We are reminded in today's scripture that after the resurrection, the disciples' relationship with Jesus is changed. He wasn't as easily recognized. He wasn't as easily found, perhaps. But the things that made him recognizable to them were the things that had always been true about who he was. The opening of scripture, the breaking of bread, the hospitality shown to the stranger. And I have to think, maybe this is how Jesus always shows up, even today. In the midst of our ordinary lives, when we're walking towards home or getting ready for supper, in the faces of our neighbors or strangers that we'll meet along the way, when we read the Bible and discuss it together, when we share a meal, when we invite someone to join us in fellowship. After all, Easter doesn't happen one Sunday and then disappear. And Jesus wasn't just alive thousands of years ago, never having been heard from since. No, the resurrection is something that happens every single day. In relationships that break and then are mended, in hopes that seem to shatter and then are slowly reborn, in lives that fall apart but get put back together, 
piece by piece. If we want to experience Jesus, if we want to celebrate Easter, we don't need to position ourselves in exactly the right place at exactly the right time. No. We simply need to pay attention. For the risen Lord is among us, moving and speaking and working here and now. And even when we find it hard to recognize him, even when we realize we've gotten it all wrong and we missed the whole point, Jesus keeps walking beside us, meeting us on whatever road we're on. He asks us what we're thinking about and then begins to retell our story back to us with a whole new ending. He sets our hearts on fire within us with a hope that we thought we had lost forever. All of a sudden we realize Jesus has been with us all along. Amen. Jesus is with us all along in the midst of this very scary new reality. As believers, We can absolutely be fearful at this time because it's a scary time and it's a real emotion. And yet, because Jesus is walking with us every single day, regardless of the path that we're going on, whether it's the path from your bedroom to the living room or your path from the living room to the kitchen or whatever path your life has taken you on, Jesus has walked with you. Maybe he seemed like a stranger, but he was always walking with you and he's never left your side. So our hymn of invitation this morning will be sung by Brother Aidan Jeffries and it, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Take it away, Aidan. Thank you, Aiden, for that beautiful hymn of invitation. Friends, we are now on to announcements. Uh, We will be continuing our virtual online services at least until Sunday, May 24th. That is uh, as our bishop, uh, Bishop Bickerton, has asked us to do. Uh, Let us continue to keep in prayer our bereaved members, the uh, uh, Williams family, of course, the sick and those who are working on the front lines. 
Um, our governor has issued a stay at home order until May 15th. Uh, so please only leave the house if it is essential to do so. Uh, and when you do leave the house, please also remember that it is now required that you cover your face in some way, regardless of whether that is with a face mask, a scarf, a bandana, some way to just keep yourself protected. Remember, we have to do our part and God is doing God's part. Our prayer line continues. Uh, you'll see a screen coming up now. We have it on Tuesday mornings at 6.45 in the morning and on Thursdays at 12 noon. It's been a real blessing. And our online giving is now set up. Many thanks to Sister Tana for getting that done. This week you will be receiving a mail from me and it will have specific instructions on how to give your donation. Last week, Dr. Knight also sent out an email giving specifics, and today I will also post it on Facebook so that it is easy to uh, begin giving tithes and offerings as long as you are able to. Uh, please also remember to continue checking in with your friends, your neighbors, your Waycrest family. Even though we can't be together physically, let's do our part in checking in with our friends and our neighbors and making sure that we're okay. And if there is a need, please do make sure to get in contact with me. My contact information will be written down below. I'm always available via phone or text message. And of course, you can always email me. And now we will sing our closing hymn, also sung by the amazing Agent Jeffries. Our closing hymn today is one of our favorites, sung traditionally during offering times. Today we'll sing it at the end. Give thanks. Thank you again, Aiden. Friends, this week, where are you walking to? Where are you walking to today? Where are you walking to this week? Make sure that everywhere you walk, regardless of where it is, that you're inviting Jesus to walk with you. He's never left your side, but it's always good to remember that he's there, listening, waiting for you to talk to him. Invite Jesus in, and let's walk closer to the Lord. Amen? Have a beautiful week.